All right, friends, I'm going to show you how to make a Smash app. Um, it's going to be an app that has uh, an animated picture that moves all around the screen uh, randomly, and uh, you're going to try to touch that picture, and when you do, you're going to score points. I'm also going to show you how to animate the picture itself so that it looks interesting, and um, I'll show you how to draw it and, and, and the whole thing. So let's get started. So the very first step, let's see, we're going to have... Um, on our screen we, we're going to need to go to drawing and animation and get a canvas. So let's go over there, drawing and animation, drag a canvas onto the screen. And this next step is really important. We have to go over here to uh, the properties and change the height to be fill parent and the width to be fill parent. So now our canvas takes up the entire screen. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and put an image sprite on that canvas. The image spray has to be on the canvas. It can't be, uh, it, it won't go anywhere else. So if your canvas isn't full screen, you're not going to be able to get it on there. It's probably the biggest problem that people have trying to get uh, image spray onto the screen is because they don't have their canvas big enough. Okay, so uh, we could do a lot of things to make this look nice. We could add a picture as a background for our canvas. We could add an image spray picture. But I'm going to have you actually animate the image sprite so that it it's like a GIF where it, it changes um, and makes faces or whatever the case may be. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, but first let's get this moving. So we're going to go to sensors and we're going to use a clock in order to move the sprite around on the screen. In other words, if you think about how you're going to move this this image sprite around the screen randomly, what's going to be the controller of that? That's the thought process here. The controller of that is going to be the clock. Every time the clock ticks, we're going to choose a new random spot on the screen and put the sprite in that spot. Okay, so now we have everything we need in order to, to get the job started. Let's go over to blocks and start coding it up. So it's, it's really pretty simple. When clock one dot timer do, so when the clock ticks, we're going to uh, set the sprite to be a random spot. So I forgot to mention this. Uh, we're going to change this clock time too, because right now the clock switches um, once per second. We're going to slow that down. Let me go ahead and change that now before I forget. So let's head back to designer real fast. Click on clock one, and I'm going to make the interval um, maybe 500. That'll be twice a second, so half a second long. Okay, so twice a second, the, uh, the clock's going to tick, and when it ticks, we're going to choose a random spot on the screen and move the sprite to that spot. So um, we're going to go to image sprite one, and we're going to scroll way down, and we're looking for a dark green set image sprite x2. And we want to set it to a random number. We want that random number to be someplace between zero and the width of the screen. Uh, so I'm going to head over to math and we're going to get a random integer from 1 to 100 right here. I know I'm moving pretty fast. Uh, if you need to, by all means, just pause the video and restart it again when you're ready. So, so 1 to 100. I don't know how wide the screen is. So rather than put a number in there for the width of the screen, because the width of the screen could change. I could uh, change the app, I could change the, I could rotate the app, so now it's in landscape mode rather, rather than um, you know, uh, picture mode, whatever the vertical name. Um, <laughs> that seems to elude me right now. Uh, so anyway, so we're gonna make this actually just set it to whatever the width of the canvas is. So, um, but, so this would work, one to the width of the canvas, but now the sprite itself has the opportunity to actually go off the edge of the screen a little bit. So we're gonna subtract the width of sprite one from the canvas width, and that will keep it always on the screen. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to math, scroll up, and we're gonna get blank minus blank, and we're gonna subtract the width of sprite one from the canvas width. So back to image sprite one, and uh, we're going to get image sprite 1, x, like that. 
So when we subtract them together, it's going to be something that's smaller than the width of the canvas. Oh man, guys, I just realized I messed up there. Uh, I came in after um, I fixed the app, finished the app, and realized that this was a mistake. It shouldn't be Image Sprite One X. It should be uh, Image Sprite One Width. Actually, I can fix it right here. I can change this to Width. Cool. Um, and jumping ahead, you'll see that I'm about to change this to Y. And, and jumping ahead, you're going to see I'm going to change this to Height somewhere and this to height as well so all right back to the video by the image sprite width if that makes sense okay so that'll set it right to left to be random and now we have to do the same thing but vertically so I'm gonna just click here and right click choose duplicate and now I have two of these now where it says X I'm gonna change it to Y both here and all the way over here Y. And I'm going to set width to be height. Because Y is up and down, and that makes sense. Okay, great. So now I have a can uh, I have my sprite moving around the screen randomly every time the clock ticks. If I want to increase the difficulty, I could make that sprite move faster by making the clock time a lower number and if I want to make it easier I can make that clock time a higher number the frequency okay um, so how are we going to keep score so keeping score really isn't too hard we're going to uh, go to variables and create a, a score variable that's going to allow us to remember the score I'll kind of call it score that seems like a pretty obvious name and uh, if I click here and then type zero on my keyboard twice and press enter, it'll autofill zero. I can also go to math and choose zero and put that there. Okay, cool. So now I have a, a score that's zero. Um, I didn't put a label on the screen. We could actually make it go right onto Canvas 1. I think I can uh, do Canvas 1 draw text. That's a little weird, though. Uh, you could try it if you want but let's do it this way. So I'm going to go to user interface. So I went to designer and now I'm over to user interface and I'm going to find label. And I'll stick that up here and I'm just going to delete the text from my label right now because I don't want it to be saying that and maybe I'll make it say score colon zero. So when you start out the score is zero. That doesn't look bad. So back to blocks. So when the user touches the sprite, this is going to be our pseudocode, when the user touches the sprite, I want to add to the score by some amount. So image sprite 1, I'm going to click on that, and I'm looking for this code right here, when image sprite 1 touched do. So put that right there. So now when an image sprite 1 is touched, I just want to take whatever the score was and set that to be plus some number. So I'm going to click on or actually I'm just going to point my mouse to where the word score is here and I'm going to choose set global score 2 and now it's a math problem so now we're going to go to math and we're going to look for addition we're going to look for blank plus blank okay so I want to set the score to be what it was plus some number so I'm going to go back to score and choose get and again same trick as I used before I can type 0 twice by pressing this blue area typing zero twice and pressing enter and a little autofill zero or like I said you can go back to math and do it that way okay so we can just add one to the score and now it'll go up one every time we touch it or we can make it a hundred or a thousand a million whatever we want alright well that's great but now if I try to run it what you're gonna find is that it never tells you the score the score is actually going to be counted but we didn't tell it to set the label to be the score and so the user of the app is never going to see this. So in order to fix that we're going to go to label one and we're going to look for where it says set label one text to. And so we can just set label one text to get score and that'll just be the number. But that's kind of plain and we could do better. 
So let's take that off and set it aside because we'll still use it in a minute. And let's go to text. And we're going to choose join. And now let's go back to text. Scroll up. And we're going to get an empty text box. It says a text string, I think. If we mouse over it, whatever, it's not saying it. And let's type in score colon space. And so now when uh, we score, it's going to change that to say score colon space and then whatever the score is. That's awesome. All right. So it would be really great if uh, when we touched it, it made a sound. So uh, we can actually do that. We can uh, go to a site like, for example, I'm going to make a new tab. Let's go to Twisted Wave. So if I go to Twisted Wave, <coughs> an audio editor, and I go to, um, I don't think I have to sign in. I'm going to try not signing in. I'm going to choose New Document. Right, so now that we're on the recording button, I can start recording by pressing the record button. And so now you can see it's recording the sound of my voice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick noise with my uh, junk on my desktop. All right, so that loud noise is uh, the stuff, just the bang I made. So I'm going to stop recording by pressing spacebar. And I should be able to replay that by just hitting space. Um, all right, cool. So that's the sound I want. Well, I'm going to highlight everything to the left of that and delete it by pressing backspace or the delete button. And everything to the right of it, same way. And so I can just play it once again. Alright, cool. So um, now I'm going to go to File and I'm going to download it and I'm going to call it Womp. Alright. Now we'll go back to MIT App Inventor. And I'm going to upload my sound. So I don't actually have a sound here that I got from the design screen. So let's head back to the design screen. And sounds are found in media. So I'm in the media drawer on the left-hand side. Sorry if it's clipped there. Uh, my screen recorder doesn't seem to like the resolution of my screen. So I'm going to click on sound and drag that on. And now where it says source right here, I'm going to upload a file. So you're not going to be able to see me upload this. Uh, you might not even be able to see the upload file thing that just popped up. But I'm going to click Choose File. And on my downloads, I'm going to find the sound that I just created. And click OK. And you see, there it is. Womp. Or Wamp. Whatever. Spelling ability not awesome, I know. So back to blocks. And so now I can click on Sound 1. And I'm going to call Sound1.play. So the result here is that when you touch the sprite, it's going to add a million, I think, to your score. And it's going to update the screen to say score, colon, whatever the score is, and play the womp sound. That's great. So the only other thing we don't have is our actual sprite animated. So I want to animate a picture of sprite. And uh, the problem with that is, or if I don't do that, um, if you try to try this app right now, the image sprite doesn't have a picture. And so there's nothing to see, and so you won't be able to, you know, try it out. If you want to try it out, you could always just upload some rando picture here, um, some kind of PNG or JPG file, and try it, and you'll see it. But I'm not going to do that. Let's now go to Piscal App. I'm going to go to piscalapp.com, and I'm going to create a sprite. All right, just like. Um, Twisted Wave, I really recommend you sign in. By signing in, you can save your work and you know do all kinds of other things that are important and meaningful and totally worth doing. But I'm not going to bother. All right, so one of the things that um, you might find when you first start using Piscal App is that this is really designed for making like icons, like this stuff at the top of my screen, 32 by 32 little doodads. 32 is not very big. So um, we're going to increase the size of that. And we're going to do that by going to resize on the right. So I don't know if it's clipped, but on the right-hand side of my screen, uh, there's five things. There's a gear, that's preferences. The second one down says resize. And when I click on that, I can change my width to be 
to be larger. Um, and a pretty good size is probably about 100, maybe 75 pixels square. I'll make mine 100. We can always size it down. Um, and I'm going to resize my canvas content as well and click resize. And so now this is all bigger. I'm going to make some kind of Pac-Man guy here just because. So I'm going to leave my color as black. And I want my Piscal to take up the entire screen available. Because by taking up the entire screen and having very little white space around it, that'll mean that uh, when the, you play the game, you won't be able to miss the app, miss the picture, I mean, and still score points. So that'll help. It'll make it play nicer, if that makes sense. So I'm going to use this uh, circle tool. And if I start in the top left corner and drag down, I get that. No, I could have went a little further, but that's close enough. I can get that to uh, fill the whole thing. Okay, so I want a, a yellow color for my. Uh, oh, shoot. Put his eye in here. Okay, so I'm going to draw an eye in here for my Pac Man. And now I want a yellow color uh, to fill in with him. So I'm going to hit the plus. And if I just create a color now, uh, I'm going to oversave the black, which isn't hard to get back, but still, it's, you know, I want more colors, not less. So I'm going to hit the plus here. And now I'm going to pick a nice bright yellow color. That's probably good. And save. And so now I have two colors in my palette. Okay, so I can go over here to the paint bucket, pour it in there. Uh -oh. So I messed up. Um, I'm going to press Control and the letter Z to go back. And now I'm going to click on my yellow. And I can paint that in there by clicking into the space. So to get back to the black, click there. Now my eye is black. All right. Um, so this will be my first slide. It'll be completely no mouth. And now I want to duplicate this, so I'm going to go here, point to this box, and I'm going to choose duplicate. Now I have a second one. I'm going to go to straight line, and I'm going to give him like the smallest mouth possible. Basically, closed mouth. And you see the animating on the right there. And I'm just going to duplicate it again. Okay, friends, so I realized that I made a mistake. You see, his mouth shouldn't be filled in black. It should be nothing like the background. You see this background back here? This background is meant to be nothing. Literally nothing. Um, like, that way you can see through it and you can see what's behind it, because it's Pac-Man after all. So I messed up. I, I think I can fix it by clicking here. Um, so this is a right click by the way. So if you're on a desktop computer, you can right click. Oh, yeah now it's gone So cool. So now I just have to do that for all these All right great so um Another thing that I, I notice you might end up doing is you might zoom in like this. If you scroll the mouse or on your Chromebook, if you like two finger scroll it, you can zoom in and out. And that's really annoying. So uh, you should be aware of that. All right, great. So now we're going to save this so that we can use it in our app. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to go to export. So don't go to save. So you can save it. Go ahead and save it. Save it now. Click save. I'll wait. Uh, in order to save it, you're going to have to be logged in, so make sure you sign in. If you're not logged in, you can save it to your computer and then upload it later. It would be annoying, but it's okay. It's going to be fine. Okay, but to use it on MIT App Inventor, we're going to export it. And we would like to use it as a GIF. That would be perfect, 
Um, but MIT App Inventor doesn't allow us to use GIFs. Uh, the GIFs won't animate. So you can put it on there and it'll just be one fixed picture, not an animation. So we can't use GIF. And likewise, we could use PNG. That's really what we need. But we'd have to do it, in my case, 12 times. Uh, so that's not going to work. We're going to choose zip. So choose zip in this case. If it was just one picture, you would have chosen PNG. And I know it's confusing. Choose the top one. But zip. Okay, so now mine's called sprite underscore, which I think is dumb. So I'm going to delete all that. And I'm going to call mine like Pac-Man. No underscore. I'm not going to choose split by layers. And I'm going to download the zip. Um, always allow. My pop-up was blocked. Okay, cool. So I have downloaded it. Now, I can't show you this right now because I'm not on a Windows computer, but if you're on a Windows computer, you're going to find it. It's probably going to be in your downloads, and it's going to be called something like New Piscal. And you're going to right-click on it, and you're going to choose Extract All. If you're on your Chromebook, you're going to find it. It's going to be in your downloads. You're going to double-click on it. And listen carefully. You're going to double-click on it, and then you're going to open it. It's going to be on your left-hand side of your screen. You're going to upload it to MIT App Inventor as individual pictures, not as a zip because App Inventor can't deal with a zip. It also can't deal with the uh, the .pis file, the .pscl file that it saves it as. Neither one of those will work. Only thing that will work in this case is a PNG. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to unzip mine and meet you back at App Inventor to show you how to do that. Now that we've unzipped it, <clears throat> we're going to upload the file. So again, depending on what computer you're on, you're going to have different uh, effects here. Again, on your Chromebook, you're going to uh, choose file, and then you're going to go on the left-hand side where you opened it, not in your regular file list, but you'll see its name on the left. You'll choose that. Uh, on a desktop computer, you're going to probably go in your downloads, and you're going to find it. It's going to be called something like Piscal, new Piscal. Click into that zipped file, find the PNG, and upload it. And when you do, you're going to get a file like that. So mine's called Pac-Man 00. Now remember, I didn't name it Pac-Man 00. I just named it Pac-Man. Added those names on there. So you're going to do that for all the files until they're all on there. Right, so let's just double check our numbers. I have 0, 1, 2, I always skipped it by accident, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I tried to do it in order, except for when I messed up, uh, just because it makes it a lot easier to, uh, you know, see if you missed any. So now all my, all my uh, images are there. They're all ready to go. And so let's do the code to animate the sprite. So in order to animate the sprite, we're actually going to need another clock because the clock is going to, every time this new clock ticks, it's going to change the picture over here. So we'll go back to sensors, find a clock, put it on the screen, and clock two is going to be our, our image clock. So I'm going to say image clock. I'm going to change its name. Totally optional, but now I'm going to call it image clock. And I'm going to choose my time interval to be 100. 100 milliseconds. Uh, that's going to be pretty fast. If it animates too fast, make that a higher number. If it animates too slow, make that a smaller number. So now back to blocks. I'm just going to collapse all these, so get them out of my screen here. Okay, so in order to, uh, to change the picture, we're going to have to keep count of what picture number we're on. So I'm going to make a new variable. And you can name it anything you want. But picture count makes sense to me. OK, so every time the image clock ticks, we're going to create an, a name for image sprite 1. And we're going to set the uh, picture to be that. So let's let's get going. So 
when image clock timer do, so when it ticks do, we're going to set image sprite 1 picture 2. And so if we think about this, what do all of these names have in common? So they all have Pac-Man in common, they all have .png in common, but that's it. Most of them lead with a zero, but they don't all lead with a zero. Your numbers might be different. Depending on what computer you're on, it may have put a zero in front of them, or may not have. It's kind of random. I can't really tell you what it's going to do. If they don't start with a zero, I'm going to make this a little bit more complicated. But if you just do everything I do, it's going to work for you no matter what. So, um, rather than, than, than do this step yet, let's see what number we're on. So, in other words, I'm going to go to control, scroll way up, and I'm going to say, if uh, my get picture is greater than 9, or actually I'll say if it's less than 10, so make sure you don't mess up your greater than and less than. I'm going to go to math, get a blank equals blank, and I'm going to get a less than. So I'm going to say if picture count is less than 10, that means there's a zero in front of it. It's, it's zero through nine. Then I'm going to set this to, uh, I'm going to create the name now. So I'm going to go to text and get a join. And join, as you see here, has only two things, and I need three. I need it to say Pac-Man, zero, and then the number, and then .png. So that's three things. So I'm going to go here, get this, drag it right like that. So now, I'm going to go back to text, I'm going to get this, and I'm going to type my name exactly as it shows here. So if it's capital over here, it has to be capital there. If there's weird things like underscores, they have to be here. Pac, oops, Pac-Man. If you're going to mess up someplace, it's going to be here. So double check this. And again, these are all the ones that are less than 10, so they all lead with zero. So Pac-Man zero. Cool. Now I'm going to duplicate this. Put this here in this sentence. Get this stuff out of the way so it's not there. Don't delete this. So that. And now I'm going to go back to text. Get a blank. And I'm going to choose. I'm going to type period p and g, exactly like it shows over here. Great. So that's if they're less than 10. What if they're greater than 10? So I'm going to go here to this mutator, and I'm going to get an else because it's either it's either going to be less than 10 or it's not. So if it's not, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to make one tiny change right here. I'm going to delete this zero. By the way, make sure that's a zero, not an O. And also make sure there's no space here. Same with up here or here. Can't be any extra spaces. It won't work. Okay, cool. So that will totally work. That'll make it be the first picture, zero, zero. Um, now I have a little bit more things to do. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to do the same thing we did before where I add one to the variable. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to set global picture to and then I'm going to go to math and I'm going to get blank plus blank. Sorry I'm going so fast. If I'm moving too fast, don't forget, you can always uh, slow down the video. You can go to controls and slow it down. Uh, now I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to add one to whatever that count was. Awesome. We only have one more problem we have to solve, and that is, what if we go beyond the number of pictures we have? So my highest number over here is 11. What if we have more than that in our count? Because this will just keep on counting forever. So in order to control that, we're going to go back to control, and we're going to go if, then. And I'm going to get this right here and duplicate it. And I'm going to say, if global count is greater than, and here I'm going to type the number of things that I have. So your number may be different. Mine, my highest number is 11. If yours is different than 11, you're going to type the number you have. So if it's greater than 11, then we're going to set it back to zero. So 
Let's get rid of this math problem. We'll set this guy back to zero. And that way, once it gets to 12, it'll be just zero again. So it's kind of constantly loop. Nice. Now we have the ability to have an, uh, a sprite that's animated <clears throat> and we can keep score and we can move it around the screen randomly. Super. So at this time, what I want you to do is how can you improve this? I want you to think about this. Well, actually, first I want you to try it. If you haven't tried it already, try it. Make sure it works. Double check everything if it doesn't. And assuming it does, then improve it. What can you do to improve this? Some improvements that would make a whole lot of sense would be maybe a pause button. Pausing the game is going to have something to do with this clock. Can you pause the clock? Can you make this clock stop, stop ticking? Can you set it to not function? Something like set timer enabled to logic false. That means not working. Could you make a reset for the score? How would you reset the score? What does it look like to reset the score? There is no reset button. It's going to be a regular old button. Reset button. Naming it reset is not enough. What does it mean to reset? What are you resetting? Are you resetting the, the label? Are you resetting the score that we created before? The, the, can we set this back to zero? Do we have to change other things? So think about that. Can you add levels? Can you change clock one and change this interval in code to make it harder? Or maybe add buttons for it. Maybe one button sets the time interval to be 500, another one sets it to be 1,000 or something else. Can you change these things? So when you create this, I want you to take your time, make at least 10 or 15 different slides for your pistol, have a sound for when you uh, touch the sprite, possibly have a sound for when you miss the sprite. Can you code it so that that works? What does it look like when you miss the sprite? Could you make a, a new image, like a squished image, for when you, uh, when you touch the sprite? Imagine I drew uh, my pistol, squished, save that as a separate image, and then here, not only do I play a sound, but I set the image, I set this image, the picture, uh, maybe I'll put it at the top, and I'll give it just a slightly longer time to play. Um, set this picture to be the squished image. Could I do that? Of course I could. So take your time, take the rest of the period, and work on that. See what you can do. Take your time, make this the most interesting, best app possible. Try to think of things that I didn't say, and do those as well. Do nice work. By all means, look at other people's games, see what they're doing. Help other people if they need help. Um, please don't play video games. I don't want you watching YouTube. Oh, you're on watching YouTube already. This is weird. All right, I'm out of here.